Hey, how's it going? So lately I've been playing a lot of bass, so I'm playing um, bass guitar in a Fleetwood Mac tribute band and I'm loving it. So I am learning a lot about good bass sounds, good what I like in a bass and what I want a bass to sound like. And I really decided that what I wanted to get was a PJ bass, so a bass with a precision pickup and a jazz pickup as well, just for the versatility. So I managed to pick up this thing on um, on um, a uh, online second hand, and it's a um, Squire vintage modified PJ bass, and it's really awesome. I really love it, and I got it for a bargain, and um, I'm going to mod it up. So um, just to make it sound even better, I've already cleaned up the frets, so they were a bit sort of corroded. So I shine shine those all up, so they look all nice. And it needs a few more things, it needs a bit of a fret level. But it sounds real good. That's the neck pickup. This is the jazz pickup. Both together. What I did on this is a, um, I've already done this one, is I put a little push-pull pot in here which is a series parallel uh, mod for the for this pickup. So I saw a guy on YouTube do this, I'll put a link to um, his video that where he explains about it, but basically it takes this pickup which is normally wired in series and turns it into parallel which makes it like a normal single coil, more like a jazz pickup, it sounds, so like this is the fat kind of that's that growly kind of bass, uh, growl, precision bass sort of sound. If I pull that out... It's a lot thinner and it's more like what a jazz bass might sound like, I think. Which is especially cool when you wind both the pickups on together. Really start sounding like a jazz bass. More of that Seinfeld sort of 80s keyboard tone. I'm thinking about changing the pickups. I'm not 100% sure yet, but um, this this one's quite scratched up. So whoever had it before me or before them, because I know that they bought it second hand, scratched up, um, was obviously pretty vigorous with their pick. So there's a lot of scratches on the, on there and there and the pick guard. So I'm gonna change the pick up covers. Um, I'm gonna change the pick guard just to make it look a bit more cool. I am possibly gonna change the pickups. I'm not 100% sure about that yet. I'm still trying to decide what ones I want. The first thing I'm going to do is I've got a tortoise shell pick guard because I think that's going to look pretty snazzy with the blue. It'll be interesting to see if it actually fits because I know this is not really for a squire and the holes might be different, but that's who cares? Like you just draw new holes, right? Um, we'll just see. I might have to shave off a bit here and there. And I've got new pickup covers just because these ones are so scratched up. Which will be completely redundant if I do get new pickups, but we'll see. Um, you'll know by the end of this video whether I did that or not. So uh, I'm going to chuck these on now. Cool. Well, I am super stoked with how that looks. The tortoise shell and the blue looks kind of vintagey and unique and different and super cool. I really like it. So, yeah, I don't need to change these pickups. They sound pretty mean. 
I have got another couple changes I'm going to do to this uh, bass. So up next, the hip shot D tuner. Just waiting for that to come in. That'll be here soon. On the back of the neck, it has that uh, really glossy finish. Well, it had that really glossy finish, like like here. Um, like you can see all the shine and the thick lacquer that you'll see on a vintage style instrument um, that can get a bit sticky I find or when it's when when your hands are cold it's sticky when your hands start to sweat it gets slippery so I much prefer a satin neck so I did what I do a lot and um, sanded this down a little bit um, all you really need is some 1200 grit like wet and dry style sandpaper that's all you really need. In this case I used some 800 as well. That was just because I did have um, a few little rough patches where the um, where the varnish was cracking that I needed to fix. So I used the 800 grit to smooth that out and um, then went over it with the 1200. And it um, feels real nice to play so I'm real happy with it. And the other thing we've done is just a bit of fret work. We're getting quite a lot of buzz around this area. Now it's playing great. All the way up the neck, there's no buzz at all. So the pickups, I've done a couple of things with these. Um, the These ones here, I thought they were, the, the P the split P here, I thought was a little bit low output. And I was seriously considering replacing it. Um, I tried to raise them up, but I just couldn't go far enough. So I got some little strips of foam, put them under the pickups, and then raised them up a bit more. I was able to raise them up a bit more with the foam, and um, they sound great now. It made a huge difference. They sound beefy and plenty of low end. So I was thinking about replacing the bridge pickup too, and that had a really scratched up cover too. I didn't get a new cover for it, but what I did do is um, just sanded it back. Sanded off all the scratches with some 800 grit and then um, polished it up as good as I could with um, the wet and dry. This, this one's had some use hasn't it? But that's the wet and dry 1200 grit sandpaper and then I got some nail polish remover. I don't know how much that did, that just sort of melted the top a bit. But that's supposed to help you shine up plastic. And then I used the trusty old... Um, mouse with some 4.0 steel wool, synthetic steel wool and really managed to give that cover a good shine up and um, looks pretty good now and it's got rid of, I've got rid of all the scratches from the last guy um, so I'm pretty happy with that and I just topped the touch the pole pieces up with some <laughs> I use uh, black nail polish to clean up those pole pieces because they were all scratched up I'm not sure how long that'll last, but if it doesn't last, I'll um, I'll use some paint next time. But so far, it's looking pretty awesome. This is just like a ceramic pickup. It's got you see, it's got the magnets on the bottom. Um, it's got some markings. It looks like a Damasio, but I don't think it is. I found some some markings there, but the, I can't find anything on the internet that relates to those pickup num uh, pickup those model numbers. But with this back on, all shined up and those painted, it looks like a new pickup again. Now I was definitely planning on changing the pickups, but man they actually sound really good with the height adjusted properly on this. And this pickup just sounds great as it is. It's quite grunty for a jazz pickup. Alright, so since I raised the, raised the pickup heights a little bit, I've got a lot more bottom end. Uh, I was feeling a lot fatter and, and thicker sounding, sounding really good. Uh, pick up, everything's looking cleaner, the neck feels smoother, really happy with how it's turning out. Just waiting for that hip shot bass extender to show up. It's finally arrived, the hip shot bass extender. I'm really excited about this. I have one on my other bass and it's just the coolest gadget ever, um, especially if you play in drop D from time to time like I do in my band. Uh, it just means you can flick the little lever, you're in drop D, you don't have to worry about your tuner or anything and it's quick and uh, especially good if you are uh, sort of in the middle of a song and just suddenly remember you haven't changed. So I'm gonna chuck this on the new bass.
Alright, so I'm just at home sort of uh, tinkering on a quiet Sunday and uh, one of the things I really liked about this base when I bought it was that it comes stock with quite a decent high mass bridge. Um, there's nothing wrong with that bridge, I'm not having any issues with it or anything, but it just so happens that my old base, which I'm not going to be using much anymore, has a badass style bridge, it's an Omega base badass bridge. And um, I put this on because the bridge on this base was bending, coming up. And I don't know, I've just kind of, I've got it. And I'm not going to be using this base, so why not try it on that one? Because, you know, as we say, you never finish tinkering. So I'm going to give that a go today. <laughs> And just like that we have a an Amiga base badass style bridge pretty much a straight swap and it looks kind of cool so there we go yesterday I cleaned all the nail polish off this pickup I used to just use some nail polish remover and cleaned that nail polish that I put on the pole pieces because that was just a temporary measure and then I repainted them with some car touch-up paint special car paint that doesn't need any primer I'm just gonna repaint those screws because they're there, um, some of the blacks coming off. So this is about the third it is finished video that I have um, filmed for this uh, base mod because you know we're never finished tinkering really are we like just when you think you're done you think of something else to do. Uh, in summary I've done the series parallel for the split P pickup. Um, I've just tied up the pole pieces on that to make them look pretty. Uh, put on a new bridge which doesn't really make any difference honestly like I don't, I don't really notice much difference. But it looks cool. Uh, I've got the drop D. Which I can't have a base without this now. It's just, now that I've had it, I can't go back to not having it. I recommend the base extender. Got the tortoiseshell pick guard. Uh, put some trap locks on. Done a lot of fret work and set up and blah blah blah. And that's about it really, I, I never put, I was going to put CTS pots in but I didn't because the um, space is a little bit too small under here. You've got um, the jack and the pot competing for space so putting a big pot would mean some routing and I just couldn't really see the point to be honest. So um, You're not happy with the pickups on your in your bass or your, or your guitar before you um, go buying new pickups try adjusting the heights because it really can make a big difference this P bass pickup was a lot lower and um, when I got it and now it's a little bit more sort of fat that's the, not not even that pickup If you want more of a vintage sound just lower it again. I'm really super happy with this bass now. The only complaint I would probably have is that the neck's a little bit skinny this way but I'm sort of getting used to it. it makes it really easy to play and if my thumb gets tired because sometimes with skinny necks you can get a little bit cramped. Cramp, I find I get a bit cramped up here. I just put my thumb over. As I said at the beginning I'm going to put a um, a link to the wiring diagram for the series parallel mod for the P, split P. In the meantime, don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment if there's anything else you want us to do a video on. And um, we'll see you next time.